feeling stiff and a bit sore this morning. Literally just woke up. Wow, look at that view. It's my balcony, view from the balcony. You see the mountains in the background. Good morning, Philippines. This is the lockdown. See the construction next door. That's actually a garage. It's like going to have 10 car garage. My neighbor is a really cool guy, actually. And uh, he's got some classic um, combi vans. I love the combi, the old uh, Volkswagen combi vans. So that's what that's for, actually. <laughs> really cool. All right. Got to make myself a coffee. How are you this morning, Clark? You good, buddy? Come on. Let's go. Turn on the air purifier. Need that pure air. But yeah, I'm going to make myself a coffee and head outside. G'day, this is Peter from the Property Club and I'm back with another episode of Coronavirus and Coffee. You can see my coffee here, my big mug. I've got the big Boracay mug here this morning because uh, I just needed it. It's probably around about 6.15 in the morning, 6.15 a.m. Actually, the weather is beautiful. It's really nice. I'm gonna call this vlog Raw. Now, it's not gonna be a long video, just a quick one, because I've got work this morning. Um, I've got my neighbor, I've just seen my neighbor, he's headed off to work this morning. So yeah, um, I've got to do the same very shortly. And look, what's going on? Well, last night, I was watching Walking Dead. So it seems perfect with the situation. You know, we've got the coronavirus and this sort of thing. So we've been watching, um, you know, Walking Dead because we hadn't finished it before. We got up to season five. And I just watched the end of season six. And I don't want to spoil it, but there's this character named Negan. Okay. And Negan, oh my God, this character. What a character. He's he's full on he's an absolute maniac and it's kind of one of these tv shows that just boom 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 it gets your heart racing oh i need some of this coffee mm. so me and the two ladies uh ruby and Ariam were watching with me and it was horrific oh it's just horrific so i hardly sleep my heart was just pumping thinking about the end of season six of the walking dead I should have watched this ages ago, so Negan, what a character, um, things are shaping up, it seems really good uh, to watch Walking Dead, um, maybe, maybe a good idea, maybe a bad idea, but anyway, moving along, like I said yesterday, the Fed, the Federal Reserve cut rates, it sounds like Australia might do the same, I read an article late last night saying that um, you know, in the next week or so, possibly this Thursday, this upcoming Thursday, the Reserve Bank of Australia would possibly be uh, lowering rates as well, which is just unheard of. Who knows? This could be you know, something new for Australia, historic uh, low when it comes to interest rates in Australia. Already, you know, you can access home loans in Australia from like 2.5%, so it's really, really low. It's super sharp. So we're in, um, yeah, interesting times, I can say. Definitely interesting times. We've got the cicadas chirping in the background. You can probably hear that. Um, it's, it's lovely here. The weather this morning is just, it's not too warm. It hasn't heated up uh, too much. It's still early in the morning. I'm enjoying my coffee. Mm. And you'll notice I haven't shaved. I haven't shaved. I'm going to leave that up to you, the viewer. So should I shave? All right, should I shave, you know, usually I shave once or twice a week, or should I grow a beard for the vlog? So maybe some, um, you know, kind of fallout looking beard, wear a bandana, so <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. No, definitely not going to do that. How am I feeling this morning? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling pretty relaxed. I'm a bit sore, my joints. I woke up this morning in a bit of pain. Uh, you would have seen that. I woke up and, you know, curtains open you can see the beautiful view behind us uh, really nice view but I am definitely feeling sore 
Uh, but I feel good, definitely feel good, and I need to keep it up, you know, keep going uh, with the walker. So, you know, I'll be on that walker straight after work today, hitting that. So I expect today is going to be a busy day. I've got to get on the phone. I've got to do my job, you know, that job. You know, how boring. <laughs> so we're not all retired. You know, some people think that I'm out here in the jungle, in the Philippines, retired, and uh, I, I do nothing. I just live the life and the money just, just flows to me. I wish, okay? No offense, but if it did, I probably, I might not be doing as much YouTube videos. I probably wouldn't be doing daily videos okay i'll probably be doing one one video every week or two okay so obviously i do youtube i don't make a lot of money from youtube mainly it's just beer money um but at the moment speaking of beer uh, i'm missing beer at the moment i'm i'm taking a break from the beer skis okay so taking a, a break from the beers um just just trying to get healthy again oh we got a bit of a breeze there in the background wow that's nice really nice breeze so yeah I'm, I'm not drinking at the moment um, so I just try to take a break for a month or so while I get back into the gym and uh, get on my walker and, and this sort of thing mm. so yeah really interesting being stuck at home I'm probably gonna head out maybe uh, this afternoon and grabbed a lot of canned goods I was supposed to do that yesterday but um, got stuck into watching this TV show so I did not do that um, again you know coming back to the Federal Reserve you know are we going to have a global financial crisis I think some people would argue that it is overdue I think actually to be fair I think it's overdue in Asia okay so the the last real crisis was in the late 90s um, you know the Asian crisis and you know places like Thailand and uh, Hong Kong and Singapore um, these places have become really really expensive you know the Thai baht for example and, and hence why I mentioned Thailand is really really strong so it's interesting that it's held up during this period this time of the coronavirus it's going to be interesting to see what happens and is it you know will we be affected just in Asia I don't think so I think this is you know worldwide I mean the coronavirus you know if it's on the back of the coronavirus it's spread to Europe to Italy it's spread to the United States it's it spread to Australia it's pretty much everywhere okay and the one thing I will say say about the US is you know we've had the GFC we've had this in recent times with Europe you know they've gone and, and had you know their own you know version of the GFC okay they've already had to cut rates to pretty much nothing actually um, interest rates uh, the EU cut the ECB actually cut rates uh, the European Central Bank cut rates below zero a few years back so that's already happened so it's interesting to see that now you know interest rates with the Fed they're down to zero so they've already done that so I think the next to follow is definitely going to be Australia I think absolutely the rates will get cut even further so interesting times I mean what does that mean are we going to have one percent rates like mortgage rates in Australia is that a good thing is it a bad thing honestly in some ways I am fearful I'm fearful for my generation because like if you look at Japan Japan's a really good example okay Japan had low interest rates for a long time but they've been in recession for like you know a long long time like 15 or 20 years whereby you know property has been very expensive but property just doesn't go up okay it's really really expensive like Tokyo for example um, used to be one of the dearest cities in the world I think nowadays it's probably places like Hong Kong and Monte Carlo but the thing is for Australians if we follow Japan and we have cheap interest rates really low interest rates from 1% all that will mean is the property prices are going to be more expensive so people that are older maybe in their 40s or 50s or 60s that have saved money that already own several properties that are cashed up investors they're going to be the real winners from this okay so they can use their money and buy lots of property and the property is going to go up okay um, but young Australians in their 20s and 30s and this sort of thing that don't have much in the way of savings now that's a problem right it's going to be a huge problem because if prices go up that means you need a lot more money to buy in 
with a deposit, okay, on, on your home loan, um, you know, to buy a property. So that is a serious, serious concern, all right? Um, you know, it, it's, it's going to be devastating for young people. And then more and more young people like myself are going to look outside of Australia. We already have a brain drain in Australia, okay? So Australia, it's known that Australia's best and brightest people are leaving the country. I mean, we got high taxes. Um, yes, we got low rates. But property is very, very expensive. You know, to buy a decent one-bedroom flat in Sydney nowadays, you're talking about at least a million dollars. And it could get to the levels of like Hong Kong and Singapore, where a one-bedroom flat costs two million dollars if rates are nothing. If rates are one percent, and it costs nothing to borrow money. It could happen. Right, so that is going to be devastating. It's going to mean that you know you're going to need like four or five hundred thousand dollars in deposit just to buy, you know, a two million dollar property. Okay, it, it means you're going to spend the rest of your life in mortgage slavery on the grind trying to pay off a thirty or a forty year loan. Okay, now that does not sound exciting to me. So, look. I'm not in a position where I can buy again in Australia. Um, you know, I don't have lots of cash just sitting around where I can say, okay, this is opportunity, rates are low, price is gonna go up, let's, let's just throw, you know, 500,000, 600,000, which in the scheme of things is nothing, okay? Um, I know that sounds funny for me to say 500,000 is nothing, but honestly, $500,000 nowadays in a major city like Sydney or Melbourne will get you a small, studio apartment that's what will get you or you know maybe you can get a house on the very very outskirts of town and who knows can you even rent the property out there if you're buying for investment can you even rent okay so this is the reason that why you know young Australians like myself I'm only 35 okay are out here in Asia and like I said earlier there is a brain drain okay and that brain drain is taking you know, the young people, the best and brightest outside of Australia. The number one region where Aussies, young Aussies are going, Asia. It makes sense. But nowadays, with the currency exchange, like if, if I was like in my late 20s wanting to leave Australia now, I would not do it. Why? Because our currency, our Australian dollar versus the Thai baht or even the Philippine peso, it is like at a 10 year low. It is terrible. I mean, I think last time I looked on the currency exchange, you know, the peso were like 31 something. Yeah, one Australian dollars was like 31.8 or 31.9. I might have gone back up to 32 or something like that. The Thai baht was like, you know, $1 to 20. So one, one of our Australian dollars buys 20 Thai baht. So yeah, it is trying times. It'll be interesting to see uh, what happens with the global markets. It'll be interesting to see what happens with currency. Um, leads me to my next point, and I am not one of these people that ever really believed in Bitcoin, but now I'm scratching my head and I'm starting to wonder. I did have a look at a chart of Bitcoin the other day, and actually I thought it would have just increased with this coronavirus and this sort of thing, but actually, what it looks like is there has been a significant, a drastic drop in Bitcoin and then a, a quick recovery. So I don't know, is that the bottom and then it's going to rise from there? Who knows? What are people buying? Um, I mean, the share market's getting smashed. Um, so I don't know, doesn't seem like a good time to buy shares until, you know, the dust settles. Um, maybe it's a good idea to have a look at Bitcoin. So for me, I've never dealt in Bitcoin. Um, the one thing that turns me off about Bitcoin, it seems like it's almost a religion. My God. Mm. I mean, like, I, I joined this group on Bitcoin and it just seemed like this religion, like, hey, um, believe you have to have the faith and, you know, give me money, I will manage your money. I don't want to give some random person on the internet, on Facebook money. You're going to trust that? Am I going to trust that? I don't think so. What I want to do is have some, um, you know, marketplace where I can go to that's trustworthy, where I know I can go and I can buy Bitcoin myself, hold it and manage it myself, whether it's just one Bitcoin or two Bitcoins or whatever it is, and just hold it and see what happens. Because maybe, 
who knows maybe um, you know the global currencies crash and it's the end of the world I highly doubt that I highly highly doubt it but you just never know you just never know I mean this could be this massive pandemic and this could be the next plague with the coronavirus it, it could blow over next month I mean come April maybe um, just like China the figures plateau everything's fine and everyone's worried for nothing so what do you think what do you think is the situation um, you know do you think there's gonna be chaos do you think there's gonna be blood in the streets do you think you know people are gonna go hungry and be fighting for food do you think I should stock up more do you think uh, it's the end of the world do you think you know we're gonna have walkers in the street and like this Negan guy with a baseball bat with barbed wire wrapped around you know we're gonna have to fight to survive <laughs> It seems a bit far-fetched. I mean, come on. All right, let's get back to reality. So tell me what you think. Let's have a bit of a discussion. Please, okay, comment below in the comment section. Also, join one of our groups, our expat groups here in the Philippines. So our local group for the Subic Bay and Clark Pampanga Angeles region is Subic Clark. Okay, so that's one group. The second group is our Philippine expats group. So these groups are on Facebook. If you search this, so search Subic Clark on Facebook or search Philippines expat on Facebook. Ask to join and I'll add you to the group and let's continue this discussion either on YouTube or on Facebook. Cheers and double thumbs up guys. Need another sip of my coffee. Mm.